Hi there friends, uh, I'm back again and I'm going to do another Falcon video um, and we're just going to sort of see what happens because uh, I don't really have a plan and there's just, as I keep saying, a million things you can do with this. Um, so I figure we just sort of start. Uh, one of the oscillators I really love is the wavetable oscillator, so I might bring that up because I use it a lot. Um, and it's a lot of fun and there's a lot of options. So let's just bring that across, add it to our key group. And when you start, it's just a sine wave as usual. Um, and this one isn't even a wave table. It's just, it's just a single cycle waveform. So it's not like if I select the wave index, nothing happens. But let's uh, select a wave table because there are many to choose from. Uh, so <laughs> you've got your single cycle waveforms here and there's quite a few of them as well, which I appreciate, like got all these weird ones, which I've never even like, I mean, this is just like acoustic sounds. I mean, I should, I should use some of these. These are cool. I haven't even really investigated these in the past and I've owned this software for like fucking six years or something. Obviously, they sound all a bit organy and lame without any sort of modulation happening on them. But, you know, you get the idea. Um, anyway, what else, what else we got in here? All right. So then there's all these other single cycles, which that's neat. And I like that that's happening. Um, one thing that is cool, though, is that you've also got some sort of unusual sawtooth shapes and sine shapes and stuff. So you've got things from like CS70 saw or CS15 saw. So this can be the basis for like a virtual analog sound if you want. Uh, if you want to use this instead of the analog uh, oscillator, which I'll just bring up quickly just to show you. I, I used it last time in the previous video, which you should go watch because I think it's worth watching. But it's just sort of like a basic analog oscillator. I'm just going to go back um, and go to this key group. Uh, but you've got some similar controls. You've got number of voices. You can go up to eight. You can go to stereo mode. You can go to wave spread, so it's super wide. Stereo spread, so the stereo field is super wide. And then you can detune it, so... That was very loud. I'm uh, just realizing. Let's turn that down. Um, and that's all well and good, but we haven't even entered wavetable territory yet. So let's get all of these back to zero or however they were. What is their default state? There we go. Um, but I like that you've got these extra sort of different types of saw waves. I think that's cool. I always like to see variety with this kind of stuff. You've got a similar thing with the amount of sine waves. You've got this you know, CS70 sine wave. Um, again, same with square wave and triangle wave. That's cool. But let's look at the multis which is their word for like, I guess the multi-wave. So it's like wave tables. So you've got all these analog ones, um, which is a bit of a misnomer because I guess they're wave tables of analog sounds, but they are obviously entirely digital. Um, let's just grab one, let's just go big square. Kind of like a filter sweepy sort of sound. Um, but we've just got so many wavetables, like, and some of them I've, like, what's this one? Elephant. I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. Um, and yeah, we've got dirty, brutal, uh, distortion. 
they all look pretty cool. You've got these sort of visual representations of them, which I think is nice. Um, not that that's unusual. Every every wavetable thing I've used pretty much does the same thing. These ones are interesting because you've got these like fractal images and then you've actually got images as well. Um, I mean, they're pretty rudimentary images. You've got the UVI logo down there. <laughs> Whoop-de-doo. Um, but, you know, these, they sound interesting. It's not like they're useless. Um, <clears throat> and then you've got these math ones. They're all pretty basic, I think. So sort of just like drifting between... Um, different uh, waveforms. Anyway, you get the notion that uh, there's a lot going on here. Um, got a lot of old digital oscillators, which have less, uh, less like wave states in them, uh, less frames, I guess you might say. Um, and they all sort of are like reminiscent of, uh, I guess, oh, what's the instrument that I'm thinking of? The Waldorf wave, no, not the Waldorf wave. PPG wave, oh my God, my synth history. Um, and um, you've got this smoothing thing here, which you can just turn off, I think. So you can either interpolate between them or not. Uh, and you can change, I guess, the way, the way it smooths, maybe not. Hmm. So anyway, as you can see, very cool. Lots to choose from. Um, I think for this one, I might, let's check out this one real quick, just cause I like the way the picture looks. That's pretty cool. Um, I'm going to go to bass uh, because I kind of just like the way this elephant one sounded and I figure we can do maybe something cool with it. Um, often when I'm sound designing patches, I'm just like, you know, opening up Falcon here. I don't really know what I'm going to do. So um, I'm just going to start doing some stuff. <laughs> Um, the raw oscillator sounds pretty harsh, so obviously we're going to filter it, but it sounds quite harsh, so I'm going to filter it just like right away, um, just so that it's not so stingy on my old ears. I'm just going to chuck a, a quick analog filter on it just to take some of that high end off. <laughs> It's a little bit nicer. Um, so we've got lots to do here. Um, I think a cool thing that I might do, which is real, you know, uh, kind of cliched thing, but is fun, is why don't we modulate this with an LFO, but then modulate the LFO that modulates it with another LFO. Um, or perhaps instead of that to make it even cooler, why don't we do that with an envelope? So we'll get the LFO going. Let's make it um, ramp down. Uh, let's increase the speed a bit. So that's what I kind of want to achieve in terms of the sound of it itself. Um, And we're going to achieve that by modulating the frequency of this with, now there's options here. Um, I think a multi-envelope is probably the best way to go. And so we've got the multi-envelope here. Why don't we try... Change the speed of this. So that's 
So that's cool. Um, I feel like this should go faster, this LFO. Maybe there's something to that which I'm missing. Um, maybe I've just been playing with VCV rack too long, which I'll do some videos on soon, uh, where, you know, go into insane audio rates there. Maybe these LFOs just aren't equipped for that. So I'm gonna adjust this uh, intensity of this modulation. So it's to make this not loop. But maybe maybe what we should do is just turn this off for the moment and let's try a different modulation. So go to key group and let's try this kind of modulation. So we get our uh, DSA, DH, DAH, DSR. Let's turn sustain all the way down. Let's turn decay. Okay, that'll do for the time being. Let's get rid of this multi envelope. Um, there are other, we could sort of decay it or delay it and we could add some attack. Maybe that's fun, let's do that. Maybe if we do this. Also got phase distortion here. Which I think we should modulate with a few different things, but I think another uh, one of these will be cool with a really long attack. fairly different sounds so they are all quite different which I think is good Um, I want to say this one. And also over here we have an FM.
Uh, <laughs> pretty wild stuff. Um, might keep it at zero. And then we can, <laughs> can modulate the fuck out of this. Um, let's go with... Oh, man. It's hard. It's hard to choose wrong. Let's try a step envelope. So the cool thing about this is, I mean, it's pretty obvious when you look at it, but um, let's just get some steps in. Oh my God. Um, so one thing that I like is you can smooth these out. I'm going to make this bipolar as well. It's going entirely too fast, so let's change the uh, clock division. this to be a bit more musically relevant if I did it like harmonic or chromatic <laughs> the way it sounds free. Uh, we should try some of these other ones though. That's all very cool, <laughs> but... I like how nasty it sounds like that. So, again, I'm not really sure what I'm doing with this sound, but let's let's immediately make it sound perhaps more interesting by just giving it maybe three. Wave spread, let's try that, stereo spread. <laughs> so silly um all right so i don't like what is this sound it's like an effect it's like a you know a riser or something <clears throat> um we could potentially make it more appealing <laughs> to listen to um we could do a lot of things let's let's try let's try like because i can draw these is fun. Oh man, I really did not mean to do that. Why is this hard?
So I'm going to change the LFO from a regular LFO to a parametric LFO. And I'm going to change the shape. Uh, to, yeah, like sort of. this analog filter here I think I'm just going to use that not to modulate it or anything just use it as kind of like a bit of um you know shaving off those high ends make adding a tiny bit of warmth and add another filter instead which I think is going to be more appropriate let's go with this via VSF VCF 20 dual which is an MS 20 filter with the high pass and the low pass <laughs> I mean, it's just fucking nuts. Uh, it's a great filter, um, and it screams like an MS-20 filter. I mean, I've, you know, obvious, it doesn't sound exactly like an MS-20, but it doesn't matter. It sounds sick uh, on its own, regardless. Um, so I think we need more envelopes here. Envelopes is the name of the, the game today. Um, <clears throat> and let's go with another one of these. And let's, again, put a real slow... And let's change the depth of this modulation a bit. <laughs> And let's bring the sustain down and the decay up. Uh, I just realized I'm clipping. So, <laughs> um, clipping is not fun. So let's turn the volume of the patch down a bit. It's also on the program, just chuck a limiter on this. Um... Hopefully the limiter won't affect the sound too much. I'll just, I might just uh, make it so it's threshold is like minus 1.5. So I shouldn't really be limiting it too much. So let's do something cool with this low pass filter. And let's, uh, hmm. you know, I can, I can double up 
uh, on the LFOs or I can use a previously used LFO. But I think in this case, doubling up is probably the way to go. Um, just so you get more control, you know. Uh, so I'm going to... Should we try a multi-LFO? Let's try a multi-LFO. Why is that not doing anything? Let's uh, clear modulations. Let's get rid of the multi-LFO. Something fishy's going on here. Oh my God, I'm so silly. Yeah, in order to use the multi-LFO, you have to actually like bring in these uh, knobs to actually create an LFO shape. <clears throat> so let's... And I want to modulate the frequency here as well. Um, and I'm going to modulate it with just another envelope. I could use the same one. Uh, I'm going to use a different one. And in fact, maybe it might be fun to do a multi-envelope. <laughs> It's obviously ridiculous at the moment because it's going so fast, but let's slow it down. In fact, let's turn this on. Oh, that doesn't seem to work the way I was hoping it to. Let's do bring it back to that. Let's bring the depth down on the on that a bit. alters the right sounds pretty significantly. But if we do some negative values, the depth of the modulation. Also add another LFO to modulate this so that it's, it's like a slow LFO, really slow, 
I'm very subtle. Um, and I might, might do it with a multi LFO. Mm, or a parametric LFO. Yes, let's go with that. And let's just sort of get the shape kind of how I want it. Sort of could do something a bit weird. Pulse width kind of maybe like that. And if I use, <laughs> use another LFO or use a smooth random to modulate some of these, This is going to be a very heavy patch with all of these modulations, but that's okay. And I'll just do a bit of smooth random to the shape as well. And I'm going to go to all of these smooth randoms and I'm going to uh, adjust the depth on them so that they're not super insane. And I'm going to turn off retrigger on all of them so that they are truly kind of starting at random places. Uh, and, and even have a random start. And let's take the depth down significantly on all of them. Real low. And then for that parametric color flow, I'm gonna have it be... <laughs> polyphonic mode. Um, I think this might benefit from being a monophonic sound though, because there's just a lot going on. So you've got options here, you've got poly portamento and your mono portamento slide and all that sort of stuff. So let's go with uh, mono portamento. <laughs> Can add unison voices, but I don't think we need to do that. I've already got a bit of unison happening down here, and I can add even more if I want. <laughs> so, one thing you can do as well is that I can modulate with maybe a macro knob uh, the intensity of some of these modulations. So if I click on this and go to edit modulations, it brings up all of my modulations for this knob. And um, on this multi LFO here, we've got this here. I've also got a depth knob over here. Um, I could assign this to a macro knob and I could also, let's just do it so we can see what we're doing. Let's assign to macro. Uh, and then I've got a macro down here now. I can just click down here. Macro, and I can rename the macro. So I'm just gonna be like uh, modulation depth. Um, and I figured if I go over here, <clears throat> um, maybe to this wave index one and I do edit modulations because this one's also pretty chaotic. Uh, I can assign this to modulation depth as well. And why don't I also assign this by edit modulations. This one doesn't have a depth knob, but I can modulate this. So I can assign this to a macro modulation depth. All right. And so, what that also does is in the info panel, it brings me up with this knob. So, and also you can move these around and you can create your own little control panels. 
Um, there are kind of limitations to it to some degree, but it's cool that it exists. Uh, so if I, let's just experiment with this real quick. sort of also use this of course I can modulate this uh, with host automation um it means I can have like a more normal sound and slowly bring in the modulation and I can also which I think will be a cool thing to do is um maybe add a macro for the intensity of the LFO speed. Um, and it's getting pretty complicated in here already, which is really why it's very handy to uh, be able to right click on these and do edit modulations, because then you can just immediately see what is being modulated. Um, and this frequency knob is also being modulated by this. Um, so it sort of <laughs> adds complications as to how I would like to adjust the speed of this. Um, it's maybe beyond the scope of this patch. Maybe I should just leave it how it is for the time being. And we can come back to that later if we need it, need to. I like the way these filters are sounding. Just the, I, I guess I assume it's sort of like the um, the drive into the filter here with this trim knob. of unpredictable hopefully it's more of a controlled chaos um let's let's sort of have a look at some other options uh we've got all of these distortion and drive options i really like this wave shaper i often use it um fuzz and stuff like that let's just test out the wave shaper because i think this sound might be too hectic already but let's have a go <laughs> Got oversampling here up to 16 times. Let's try that. Oof, that is pretty fucked up. quite like that um and there's just so many filters in here uh it's quite cool that there are so many um one that i have talked about uh, actually no i haven't talked about before is this format crusher filter which i don't think is appropriate for this sound but let's just have a quick look at it <laughs> It's, uh, 
you can uh, pick the vowels and you can morph between them. It's kind of like a talking filter. It's also very bit crushed. Uh, that's why it's called Crusher. I like that filter a lot, uh, especially using it in very subtle ways. Uh, it can be quite cool. Um, but if we wanted to go down the bit crush path, there is a bit crusher in here. Uh, I think it's in miscellaneous here, Redux. Um, you got all these presets for it, which is kind of neat. Um, <laughs> I love a bit crusher and I love a sample rate reduction. Um, let's see, I just love it. It's a great effect. Uh, again, I think there's already too much happening in this sound. I just wanted to have a quick look at it. Um, but there is a filter in here that even though we, I don't think it's worth using today. I just wanted to have a quick look at it. Um, it's the comb filter. It's very basic comb filter. You don't get any, we well, certainly don't get any sort of visual elements for it, which is kind of a shame. Um, if I bring key tracking all the way up, and I set this to C4. Or let's try C2. This could be cool. Like there are so many applications for a comb filter. Uh, this is not one of them, I don't think. Um, we'll look at that another time. I think that we're maybe a bit done with the key group section and it might be time to go to the layer section. And I kind of think with this, um, it might be cool to have a sequencer of some kind. So we have looked a little bit at some of the sequences in this app um, or this plugin. There are so many options though. Um, so many. Let's have a quick look at this one. You know, the problem with a sequencer in this case is all of this modulation I've done immediately resets, especially if it's tied to an envelope. So I can't really do that. Otherwise it ruins the sound. And I really should have thought of that before I even brought it up. Set it down here. All right, fuck that. <clears throat> Ignore me, ignore me. Um, we do have other options though. We got granulizer. <laughs> That's a cool effect.
instruments clouds a little bit uh but i suspect what would make it a lot like that is if i added a reverb after it um <clears throat> so let's try doing that um what we got here sound is pretty dumb <laughs> like that I can't imagine when I would use it <laughs> <laughs> be time to wrap up this sound so there are a few cool things that i maybe like to do um quickly i just maybe a little bit more slow attack and a little bit more release <laughs> I was also thinking it might be cool to add another macro knob uh, so I can sort of control some of the intensity of some of these things. Um, <clears throat> uh, for example, the wave shaper. If I... Um, Assign to macro, new macro. And I make it so the full amount is kind of where I had it before, maybe a little bit higher. So then it would be like if I had it off. Um, I increase that a bit so we can go to some extreme values. I 
forgot to mention with this wave shaper, many types of wave shaping, um, different, I guess, algorithms you might say, like fold back. <laughs> Sign. So might add a little bit of drive, maybe. Hmm. Maybe not drive, maybe analog crunch. <laughs> Seeing that I edit these modulations, I'm going to turn the release up on this one. <laughs> So might uh, remove this unassign from the macro. Um, because I feel like how do I remove it from the macro? Hmm. Oh. It must not be connected to the macro. Yes, <laughs> yes, 
modulations because something fishy's going on. I will add this modulation back to the multi envelope, no the step envelope. <laughs> And I'm going to add this to a macro. Uh, I'm going to call that macro FM in 10. I'm just going to just call it FM. And uh, I'm going to make it bipolar. Just like the parameter that it's controlling. So now... <laughs> Where is the stamp envelope? If I just bring that to zero. And then I go to the macro. behaving how I expected it to behave, which is annoying. Um, let's... So I think a cool thing to add to the sort of final stage of this signal chain uh, is maybe like before the reverb though, maybe before the granulizer is perhaps even before the analog crunch is a filter, just a basic filter. Uh, although we've already got this filter at the start, maybe we can just use that. The reason is, is because there's a lot of harmonic shaping happening after the fact. I feel like I want that filter to sort of shave off those harsher intensities. So we can use this sound as a, a very nice, um, let's go with a brick wall filter, uh, like bass sound. Let's try a different filter. Uh, much like that filter either. Um, Salen key. Now we're talking. I'm gonna put it before the analog crunch as well. Put it after.
And I'm going to add this, assign this to a macro as well. I'm just going to call that macro master filter. Or cut off. Um. <laughs> this sound needs a lot of taming. But I kind of feel like I need to stop this video. So I feel like I've been designing for a while now. Let's just uh, bring these into some sort of line with each other. It doesn't have to be anything perfect. You can also, I believe, uh, incorporate um, like an image into the background of these. A lot of the, uh, well, all of the, um, you know, the presets that come with it and all of the sample packs that UVI sell that can be used with Falcon all have their own little interface and everything like that. Um, so it's all doable. Uh, I don't think I'm going to be doing that. This is as far as I'm going with this sort of stuff. silly um and i think i'm gonna leave it there i there's a lot more i could do i feel like it needs some taming i feel like maybe some of the choices i've made here aren't the best um but that's what happens when you just sort of go in blind uh i, I do like the vibe of it i don't know when i would ever use it what if i just turn this fm off <laughs> add a, a macro to this oh, you can't that's really silly uh there is a because <laughs> if you add a macro uh to these control like there there is a macro for on off so <laughs> why i can't macro the fm i don't know <laughs> I really wanted to make this super bassy I could add like a like a sine wave underneath it as a separate key group um let's just experiment with that if I add another key group let's select the as, as we mentioned earlier let's select the um CS70 sine wave What the hell happened to my sound? Where did it go? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> All right, I don't I do not know why. Let's uh, let's just add another layer. You can have multiple key groups per. Uh, is it, oh. I think I I think I just need to do it here. Uh, let's try it. Yep, and then let's go. Let's just get rid of this one.
I keep saying I'm going to stop, but let's just uh, see if we can do some dynamics with like a bit of three band compressor compression. <laughs> That's it. That's all I'm going to do. Um, I got that sine wave in there. Just did a little bit of mastering on it. I feel like it sounds pretty cool. Hopefully. <laughs> I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to assign these to a macro. New macro. 
and I'm going to call it resonance. Why don't I just call it peak? And I think that's all. I think adding it to this uh, other filter might be a problem. So let's try that. Why the fuck not? That way we can go from extremely dry to extremely wet. <laughs> Modulation on this is slightly too fast. So I'm going to edit the modulation on this. Oh my god, it's not on the filter. My brain is melting, it's on this. Let's edit the modulation on this. Thank you for watching uh maybe i'll play out a little bit um but that's it i'm gonna do another one of these videos hopefully a little bit more structured next time uh but i thought that this uh you know hopefully this gives you some sort of uh, insight into just the fun you can have diving into patch creation with uvi falcon i know that i have fun with it um and that's just like a very it's still kind of a basic patch there's a lot of modulation happening but there's not a great deal else in there. Um, anyway, hope you enjoyed. I will catch you next time.